talk about what the actively dying phase looks like, which is the last phase of life. But what about the last few weeks to months? What does that look like? What does the body do during those phases? In this video, I'm going to explain what typically happens in the last six months of life. So from six months until death, what are the things that we can look for and what's happening? The further we are from death, the more grayer the explanations will get. I love living in the black and white. I love knowing why this happened, when it's happening. I, I, I want to know, I want to see it all. I wanna have all the answers. And so do most people, especially during a really scary time that feels really out of control, like, your end of life journey. However, I always try to explain to my patients that the further you're away from death, even though six months doesn't seem like a very long time, but the further you are away from death, the harder it is to know exactly what's going to happen. So I'm just gonna give you what I typically see. This is very general, but this is typically what I see a few months before someone dies. And to be clear, the people who I'm discussing in this video are people who have been given a terminal diagnosis with less than six months to live. So around the six month mark, I would say the things that you're seeing, and again, this is not black and white, this is very general and gray, but generally speaking, the person is going to withdraw socially. So they will be more introverted, spending more quiet time alone. You will see them eating and drinking a little bit less, it being less of a priority to eat and drink, and sleeping a little more or taking more naps. You'll also notice that they may be less active. So before they were getting in their car, driving down the street, going shopping, walking around the block, and now you might notice that they're doing that less and less. So around the three month mark, I would say you're going to see all of those same things, but more. So more introverted or spending more time alone. You may notice that they're not really leaving the house anymore. Now they're mostly out of bed to chair or walking to and from the bathroom. Maybe every once in a while getting outside, walking around the block, but not much. You're going to notice they have less and less interest in food and drink. You may actually find yourself trying to get them to eat because you're noticing how little they're eating. Also, their sleep is going to be much more. They could be sleeping later, maybe taking more frequent naps and sleeping longer during those naps. You may notice at this time too, around the three month mark, that they actually need assistance now for daily living activities. Maybe needing help getting up, needing help going to the bathroom, getting off of the toilet. Maybe they need help showering, or maybe they need help getting dressed. Around the one month mark, this is where the visioning happens. You guys hear me talk all the time about people visioning at the end of life, where they start talking to dead relatives, saying they're seeing their dead loved ones, dead pets, maybe angels, maybe they're having dreams of their dead relatives, or they are talking about going home or going on a trip. Around the one month mark is when this will start happening. Of course, not everyone, but many, many people this will start happening with. Around the one month mark as well, you're gonna see all the other things you were already seeing just enhanced. So maybe now they're never leaving the house. Maybe now it's hard just to get out of bed. Maybe they're only getting out of bed to chair. Maybe now they might need a bedside commode to use to go to the bathroom, or maybe even having moments of incontinence where you have to change them and clean them up. Definitely, definitely eating a lot less now and sleeping a lot more. Once we get below one month, anywhere from like two to three weeks, you're going to be seeing sleep increase a lot. So I'm talking like 16 to 18 hours possibly of sleeping. Almost no food and water intake. Maybe never whole meals, but a few bites here and there throughout the day are only eating things like ice cream, something that tastes good to them. You may notice that they have some confusion or disorientation now. They could be having the visioning still, talking to dead relatives and loved ones. Again, if they're not agitated by this, let it be. You might notice that now they need help with all daily living activities. So you're doing everything for them now. You're possibly getting them up, having them be in a shower chair in the shower. They're incontinent, so you may have to change them. You may have to dress them. It depends. Some people are more functional at this time and some people are very debilitated. It kind of depends. But this area, the weeks range before death, usually the care will increase for the caregiver. Now getting down to like the last week of someone's life, this is when the rally could happen. So the rally happens in about one 
third of all of our patients. This is where they get a burst of energy, kind of like their last hurrah, where they start suddenly looking like they're getting better. They're acting like them old selves. Maybe they're suddenly hungry and they haven't been hungry for weeks now. I like to educate about this because it's important for people to know that this does happen. And this does usually indicate that they will die soon afterwards. So appreciate the rally for what it is and also prepare yourselves to know that they may be dying soon afterwards. So this usually happens about a week to a few days before death. Now, once we're in this stage, about a week to a few days before death, this is what we call like the transitional phase before actively dying. Here, they're going to be sleeping, I would say, 18 to 20 hours a day getting to a point now where they're not eating anything and maybe just taking sips of water or juice throughout the day they're probably in and out of consciousness here definitely incontinent where you're changing them and cleaning them up you'll have to dress them they'll probably be, be bed bound laying in bed all day which again is normal and to be expected and then the transition will go to actively dying and actively dying is the videos that i show you and what i talk about a lot where it's the last few hours to maybe a few days before someone dies. And usually during this time, they will be fully unconscious. So they are not waking up. They will not be eating and drinking. Then you'll start seeing the changes in breathing. That's how you know there are a few hours to a couple days before death because their breathing will change. And it's okay, it's to be expected. Then you'll start hearing terminal secretions or what we call the death rattle, which is the gurgly noise that people hear and they hate it so much. If you're interested in like learning what that is, I have tons of videos about the death rattle. You can check those out. During the actively dying phase, they'll also be, like I said, incontinent and max assist for all ADLs, meaning you are going to be changing them, turning them and cleaning them up. They will not be getting out of bed and they will usually have changes in skin color at this time. So their hands and feet might look a little more gray or a little more purple or a little more pale, depending. And you also might notice that they start having spikes of fevers. So at the end of life, we stop being able to control our core temperature that keeps us at 98.6. The person will feel really cold, but uh, their temperature will be really high or they will feel really hot, but they'll say they're, but they'll be really cold. Their skin will be really cold. So it just depends. And this is all very normal and to be expected. Sometimes if we see high fevers, we'll either give Tylenol suppositories at this time, or we can just use cooling measures and put cold cloths like on their inner elbows, on their forehead, back of their neck, just anything that might feel a little comforting. Lastly, during this time, we want to let the body be the guide. So as long as your person is clean and safe and comfortable, you just be with them. The one one thing I always tell families to do is to make sure their lips and their tongue are moist. So usually hospice companies will give you little sponges that you can put in cold water or juice and you can moisten the inner mouth or moisten their lips and put chapstick on the lip just to keep it all moist because it could feel a little uncomfortable having a dry mouth. So as you can see, sometimes it can take months to get to that last phase of life, the actively dying phase. And many things can happen during those months. Hopefully this video helps explain some of those things. But if I didn't mention something that you saw, let me know in the comments and hopefully I can answer your questions.